Thank you, GALF. My colleagues, Shanaz Bashir and Shafi Shok. Uh, good noon. Um, thank you, Rafiq, for introducing us. Uh, it's a very important issue to talk about. Uh, I'll begin with something that I read uh, some years ago, rather heard in a, from an interview on Al Jazeera where this uh, Libyan author Hisham Mathur was in, uh, interviewed on what it means to write in a war, what it means to work, what it means to create, what it means to paint in the times of conflict. So he rightly said, which I immediately identified, identified myself with, that during the war, when the war is on, uh, it's not possible to create art, it's not possible to write. Uh, the more important places to do that, to do a storytelling, are the barbers and bakers and the butcher shops. And I identify with that because all that time in 90s when I was in school, my uh, parents would always, when there would be an announcement in the morning, the early morning, that there has to be a crackdown and we have to come out for a, come out for an identification parade in which we would be made to stand in a queue in front of a jeep and an informer inside the jeep who would just press this horn at the time when he thought that uh, he has, because he was continuously tortured in custody so he had to get some he had to get the people he had to get the army engaged with somebody else so that he could get a little recess so he would just press the horn uh, when he saw that there was somebody who had some religious connection or who had a long beard or something so uh, my parents in the morning the first thing that they would do is to look for all the Urdu newspapers in the house including the holy book, whatever there was, and hide it. Not to give an impression that we were reading Urdu because it was also considered very uh, seditious, I would say. And it was like the same situation that I later read about something like uh, what happened in Nazi Germany, that this officer from the Gestapo, he asked uh, one of the uh, uh, one of the Jews that uh, today is my birthday and I can be human I can give you a life for today if you're able to tell me which one of my eyes is a glass one and he points out directly that this one is the glass because one of them was glass then he curiously asked how did you know because, and he said because this one is still human that the same thing happened and uh, but after mid 90s people started writing I knew all this time that I have to write but I couldn't because I told you why and there was a generation who couldn't do it but now we have boys and girls writing and performing like anything we have the first rapper uh, in Kashmir, MC Cash. He was my student in university also. He's the first, he is, he's a pioneer in rap. He introduced rap and he introduced all this resistance lyrics in the rap. Then we have Uzma Falak, who is a young girl. She studies anthropology in uh, Germany and she has been writing super, super poetry in English. We have some boys who have uh, introduced, I don't know whether it already existed, but some kind of, you know, some form of it should have existed somewhere, that there are these stones uh, that you find in the streams of Kashmir, small, there are boulders as well as small stones. So they pick up these stones of different shapes and then they create a mosaic, some, some kind of mural on the ground that they they place, they adjust, they put the stones in a way, different shapes of stones in a way and create a scene of a crackdown of something, you know. That is also new. A doctor in Kashmir is doing that. Uh, then there is 
Kashmiri, uh, young Kashmiri woman called uh, Hina Khan, she goes by the name Ramuze Behudi. So she writes superb haikus, uh, small uh, lines and beautiful, you know, in English as well as Kashmiri. Then we have, even because there is also a problem that my generation was not, uh, you know, we didn't uh, learn writing in Kashmiri script because that was not in the school. We speak Kashmiri, we can understand Kashmiri, but there, there was no script. There was no script in my time, so no, none of my uh, generation, you know, writes, can write in Kashmiri script. And that was also a, a, a decision of, a, of the state. Uh, but despite that, there, uh, thanks to Shafi Saab, he created the Department of Kashmiri in Kashmir University some 40, 50 years ago, has worked since, and uh, he, uh, he got some good scholars, even though not all of them, but there are some young Kashmiris who have even started writing in Kashmiri poetry, and even published a very good, there is a book called uh, Zart Panik Ter, it's, in, it's a Kashmiri, it means a heap of pale leaves, which is a very strong metaphor. And she writes in Kashmiri, she also writes haikus and long poems, and she also is, you know, doing very well. And likewise, there is a, there is a, there is a huge, you know, uh, output of poetry and art and whatnot in Kashmir. Uh, this is a brief review I'm giving you of what is happening in Kashmir now, and this generation is coming up in writing. I personally received, you know, uh, we started with Basharat, who, who pioneered this long form, you know, a, a memoir in, called Curfew Nights, uh, uh, Curfew Night, and then Mirza Wahid writing his book, and meanwhile, you know, I was also uh, writing my book, and after this, there is a profusion of youngsters who, you know, keep uh, clogging my inbox day in and day out and asking that how can they pitch their books and there is a, there's a guy who recently came to my office and he said I left journalism, I left day to day reporting and he had actually done that without any financial support and ended up writing 95,000 word novel and I was really, yeah, good. And then, and this is not about, this is one case and there are so many that I do not know. So this is coming out. So in other words, girls are coming out of the words. Boys and girls are both coming out of the words. So that's what you know. That's a small uh, overview. I'm just yeah. before before we hand it over to uh, Shafi Sa, I just wanted to point out that uh, Aga Shahid Ali, uh, seminal work, the country without a post office has inspired many young yes. Kashmiri uh, poets and writers and uh, Aga Shaidali of course taught and made a name for himself in contemporary, uh, in, the, in the small incestuous circle of contemporary American poetry. Uh, other than that, you also mentioned the stones. The Palestinians take the stones and make the, uh, the symbol of the kafia, the scarf, so that actually uh, seen being sold in craft shops. Friends, I am not a politician. I have no solutions for a problem that to me has no solution. Accept that. We accept the reality. And there is nobody in the subcontinent to know the reality. Will you believe that we three musketeers, the, as you call it, the three Beautiful from Kashmir here in Gawa met for the first time, knew each other for the first time. I did not know this uh, young man, um, uh, Shahnaz Sahab. I did not know Rafiq Sahab. He is in America and Shahnaz Sahab writes in English and I write in Kashmir. But we have never met. We have not read each other not a single time. We do not know each other. So, my point is that the first casualty of this turmoil was communication. Communication. Kashmir issue all right. It is a burning issue. It needs immediate solution so as to save 
the millions of suffering masses of India and Pakistan. That is the domain of the politicians. My domain as a Kashmiri writer, writing in a very small and minor language that is Kashmiri, Kashmir, for the last 50 years, I have been dealing with the problem at the level of a poet. I am a poet essentially, recognized as a poet. I write about the human pain, pain of the individual who is in the turmoil. Whosoever created it, that is not my concern. But the problem is that for the last 50 years, deliberately, deliberately, Kashmir has become a Frankenstein monster so as to make the two democracies, two countries flourish. Their, their, their trade of politics here in India and here in Pakistan. But this has assumed such a, such a, such a uh, volcanic situation that Kashmir, a small Himalayan valley, bracketed, bracketed between four or five nuclear powers, India, Pakistan, China, Tajikistan even, because they have their nuclear arsenal dear, it is where have shared borders with them and Russia and then so many other central countries, central Asian countries. In this situation, as a poet, one can, is poor poet, a miserable poet, can only do one thing, not to make this pain and agony a trade. And Kashmir has become a trade for the filmmakers. It has become a trade for these fiction writers. It has become a trade for the journalists. It has become a trade for the TV channels who run Kashmir, depict the Kashmiris as monsters. And there are three, four channels that depict them as monsters. It is their trade. It is their creation. And I am suffering. I am suffering. I have, my house has been demolished. I was humiliated, I was kidnapped, I was tortured, and then what not. Books have been written against me that he seems to be non-conformist. Is it, is it really a struggle? Is this a, big, a revolution that all are to be silenced, all are to be forced to say one voice? That is, that is the predicament of the whole India right now, when one person with oneness wants to devour all other ones and become a huge one, that huge one is sure rupture. That is, that is the problem in Kashmir also. All the voices are being, being silenced. Do you know that 20 of my friends who happen to be authors of numerous books were killed, mercilessly killed. Do you know that most of our outstanding writers of international fame, Hari Krishan Gaur, Bansi Nirdosh, many others died in exile in different parts of India. They were forced out. Who forced them out? That is not my problem. But there was a force who forced them out because of this Kashmir problem. They died in exile and those who are living in their 90s and 80s are singing nostalgically about the poet. Now, some people who happen to have access to the external world, who are the most privileged, I am also a privileged man that I could make it possible to come here. But there are hundreds like me who never are do I find any opportunity to speak. It is really very hardening to say that some people who never have bothered to learn Kashmiri, who have never bothered to know the tradition of Kashmiri language and literature, now they have switched over to English and they are doing well, they are writing well. 
आई मस्ट कन्फे 